So then we're going to go right into the acting room. And this is something that I've actually never showed people before, but I'm going to show you, which is, it's the raw absolute data. And it, you can see me literally just thinking a lot. So I really wanted to take this opportunity to share something like that with you guys. This is the raw, raw video that I shot. And actually, I wanted to talk about it real quick. I'm going to let it play. But while, while we're watching it, I wanted to talk about what software I'm using and what cameras I'm using because it's actually really important to my workflow now. I use actually my iPhone because it can shoot HD video. And not only that, like there's an app that I use. It's called Film Mic Pro, F-I-L-M-I-C Pro. I think it's, it's only a dollar, a couple dollars. It's really cheap. But what's important about it is it converts your iPhone camera to shoot 24 frames per second. So if you're working in film, this is hugely important because if you're actually using a camera that's shooting, say, 29.97 or 30 or whatever you're using and you're compressing it down to 24, you're going to get dropped frames, repeated frames, aliasing a lot of times if you're using like a mini DV. So your reference actually ends up not being nearly as effective as it could be. So this video here is shot with my iPhone. It's HD. I can see a lot of detail and it's at 24 frames per second, so I'm not missing anything. So as we're looking at the reference video here, you're seeing me test a lot of ideas, how he looks around, how he gets up. Um, right here, I'm, I have a mirror looking on the other side, so I'm actually looking at myself, looking at the poses, and checking what's appealing. I get pretty into like just thinking of ideas and whatnot. So here, I'm, I'm again, checking appeal and silhouette. Actually, see, I wanted to talk about little stuff like this, what's not working. So right here, I'm looking down and I'm seeing that things aren't staged right in terms of like where my foot is. So I'm thinking, well, this reference would be a lot better if I staged the silhouette better. Put that foot out, maybe repose, put that knee down. And I'm thinking of that all right now. All those basic lessons of silhouette and appeal, trying to nail those right away. So like right there, like I'm not going to use that clip of him pulling his body in because there's no sense of timing there. There's no sense of contrast and like it's all just very even. He barely pulls in his legs. There's no sense of like, like he, it's all even pace. And what I mean by even pace is like he moves his hand at the same pace. He moves his legs in at the same pace. He puts his head at the same pace. It's essentially it's boring. So, you know, I'm going to review this video and, and try to come up with new ideas. So let me actually show you what software I use. So I use Premiere Pro to edit my video. So here's my long video here, and I cut um, different areas of, say, a clip that I found interesting. So here I looked at this. I found that interesting on how he jumps up and looks around. So I would point that out. I like the ending of this, how he bites the apple. There was a little clip here that I really liked, so I moved it you know, to the side. And I'm just clipping out things that I like. And I assemble it, importantly, into one master file that strings everything together. So what I liked about this right here, I like that change of pace. Okay, so we're, we're seeing him think, have w one even pace to looking around, and then a quick dash putting his feet in really fast. So I made sure I got that in my reference. Change of pace again, like in terms of like right before he falls asleep, he does one last look around and then sucks it in really, really fast. Again, change of pace, nailing that in the reference. So you get one master reference file that has everything you absolutely want. So let's, let's just show that, that reference video. This shows exactly like I'm speeding up some parts even to make it match kicking up the apple, biting the apple, all this stuff is exactly what I wanted. In terms of getting that final reference video, what's so important is really assembling one single idea and not having a bunch of clips left over that you're having to filter through later to find that one, that one part that's going to be the ticket. And if you have actually a really good director that can actually see this stuff, you can show them your final reference and they can hopefully get it. And you can use that as almost your first pass of showing your animation. 
So I want to make sure, since you guys were asking of how much time it takes, so a lot of the reference videos, I usually shoot any given scene, like an average dialogue is somewhere between 5 and 15 seconds of dialogue. I would shoot probably around 3 to 10 minutes chunks. Watch that 3 to 10 minute chunk of reference. Like literally turn off the camera, watch what I shot, then find what I like, write down what I liked, what ideas I liked, and reshoot it again. Then watch that, then reshoot it again, then watch that, and then reshoot it again. And usually by that, either the third or the fourth time, somewhere in there will be the perfect reference clip. So it's important to be diligent and to reshoot and make sure you have exactly what you want and what you intended. What's also interesting, like this particular animation was much more cartoony, but it also comes with the difficulty that a lot of parts are like there's no way to shoot reference for, like, you know, the take of him jumping up. I had to pretty much skip that. So you have to kind of come up with your own little like squash frames or stretch frames or whatever, or like whenever I animate Scrat, it's like, you pretty much have to throw reference out the window. But yeah, it's to find those really, those major subtleties. Have you ever did your reference and then went back and used your Cintiq to point out good arcs and poses? Nope. <laughs> um, no, definitely not. Because I feel like the reference is really there for timing and poses, and not really arcs. Finessing arcs and polish and um, and spacing is something that I actually don't rely on the reference. And that's just for my own sense of like, I want to feel like an animator, so I want something to do. I don't want to rely on my reference so heavily that I don't feel like I'm even doing my job. And I'm not making it interesting anymore, and I'm, I'm bored. So that's where the artistic part comes in, and that's where I feel like I get to really push things. So I'm not going to really look and like follow like with the Cintiq and make special notes or anything like that. What do you do when there's more than one character in a shot? I will do both characters. And usually caught myself in or I'll get a friend and act with them. A lot of times I do rely more on myself for those multiple characters. Do I ever run into an issue where there's something that I struggle to like act out? And definitely. I was character lead on a character named Linda on Rio and that was very difficult for me to act out some of the more feminine movements. Not when it when it comes to like sitting here and like trying to act like a girl and it's a lot in the head tilts and being shy and that kind of stuff. So that stuff's really easy to do and to mock up. But what is more difficult is the walking, the walking and talking, the running. Man, there's no way for me to simulate the hip movements and the way my arms swing. It's so inbred into the way that I act, I can't get out of it. So for that stuff, I would definitely, I was filming other girls, having them act out my shots for me, copying that in. And it really came down to those times with the mechanics that I just, it, there was no way for me to get it. And it, I just looked like a guy pretending to be a girl and it just didn't look right.